Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd alhamdulillah the question was asked about <coughs> the man who uh, forces his wife to work or in order to maintain a, a very minimal lifestyle the man doesn't work or hardly works and his wife is forced to work two jobs in order to support and maintain them first and foremost we need to know <clears throat> and, and they were asking for nasiha advice first and foremost as we know and it's well known in Islam uh, the rights of the husband and the wife and from amongst those rights is that the woman should be taken care of by the man and it is not an obligation upon her to work and take care of the household unless it were a situation where the woman uh, where there was uh, no, you know what the man did not earn was insufficient and he's doing his best and it also is still a necessity and she is able to do so in a halal environment in order out of necessity because the asal is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem arijal arijal al-qawimun ala nisa that men are the maintainers and protectors of the women and in authentic hadith <coughs> narrated in Hakim ibn Muawiyah al Qurayshi on his father's authority, radiallahu ta'ala, who I asked, O oh, Allah's Messenger, what is the right of the wife of one of us upon her husband? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, That you should give her food when you eat, and clothe her when you clothe yourself, and do not strike her on the face, and do not revile her. The narrated narrated the rest of the hadith that has been mentioned in the chapter on treatment of wives, and this is in Balugh Maram. Also in the hadith narrated Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of uh, Hajj, which is a very long hadith, and he said, fearing Allah regarding the women, he said, they women have rights over you. Uh, the men are to provide for them with their sustenance, uh, give them sustenance and clothing in reasonable manner. Uh, in a reasonable manner and this is in Sahih Muslim also in the hadith narrated Abdullah uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said it is enough for a person to be considered sinful that he re he neglects those whom he is responsible to sustain reported by an Nisa'i Muslim has the wording to withhold food from the one whose food he possesses so a person in a situation like this is in a dangerous situation and it is on the brother to do his best to provide for his family and it is on him to fear Allah as much as he can uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem ya ayu ladhina amanu wa taqullaha haqqu taqati wa la tumutunna illa wa antum muslimun and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem يا أيها الناس تقول ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث وبث منهم رجال كثير ونساء وتقول الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has ordered us with fearing Him and that He created us from a single soul and He uh, and, 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 and we demand mutual rights from one another and that we should feel, fulfill those mutual rights of one another and that is a part of taqwa Allah and so a person who's in a situation as was described advise them and let them know that that is their duty before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they'll be held accountable if they are not meeting the responsibilities of their family to the best of their ability and that they should not put hardship and burden upon their wives especially if it requires her to do haram if they have a mutual understanding and she works outside of the household and it's a lawful environment then alhamdulillah this is fine but if it is a situation where he's forcing her to go out or whatever the case may be and she is in an unlawful environment then this is problematic and a sin will be upon him if he is able to prevent that type of situation. So it's very, very important to fear Allah as much as you can and be fear Allah as much as you can with regards to the rights of the women and strive your utmost 
to fulfill one another's duties and rights. And the last thing I want to mention with regards to fulfilling the rights of one another is something when we ask one of the Mashaikh Shaykh, uh, <coughs> Muhammad ibn al Wahhab al Aqil, half of Allah Ta'ala in Medina, and we asked him about a situation that had arisen with regards to, you know, the rights of the wife and, and so on, or it may have been a situation about polygamy. I can't recall what the question was at this at this uh, time, but then the Sheikh he mentioned one of the important things is tafahim, that between the husband and the wife there should be understanding. So. What may work for one household may not work for another household. That is very important to to realize. So this is in general for those people about to get married, those people who want to get married, those people who are in marriages, that in order to make your family last, because we live in a time when the divorce is like nothing. How many 20-year-old, 18-year-old girls do we know with children that are married in Muslim situations with children already or one child or whatever, and she's a divorcee? Because people don't know how to stay married. And people don't have the strong intention to stay married and they divorce very easily. So it's very important to have a concept, of course, of staying together, staying married, if you are able to do so. If you, if it's, if you guys do not have conflicts that are uh, destructive to your religion or destructive uh, to your persons or what have you, violence all the other issues that can arise then strive your utmost to keep your families and one of the best ways to do that is to find him is that you have an understanding with your spouse and that means not being rushing even if your spouse falls into sin not rushing to uh, seek divorce if you're a woman to seek a khula or what have you if your husband he becomes lazy in prayer don't rush you know, hurry to rectify him, to give him advice constantly. Be patient, be patient. Uh, if he stops praying altogether, then this is something different. But in general, you want to realize that life does not work as a textbook. There are textbook scenarios, but most of life is not like that. And so people have to determine what boundaries that they will have within their marriage that they can that they can work with. For example, I know some people this and this is Tajawas, this is Muharram, but I know particular situations that I recall from many years ago where a wife and it was not a religious family at all, the husband was known uh, to be a play playboy and not to pray, but the wife was kind of religious. But she loved him to such an extent that even though, even if they had a guest that was a female in their house and the man was alone with the other female doing whatever he was doing, that she didn't like it, but she loved her man and she stayed with him until eventually, after a long period of time, they divorced for other, other circumstances or really because of a distance, because of war and tribulations. And my point being is that every family situation is different and that we shouldn't rush, we shouldn't accept sinfulness and wickedness, but again, the first mistake that someone makes, you should not rush to seek divorce. Oh, my wife didn't cook my meal, uh, divorce. Oh, she didn't, uh, uh, she didn't listen to me and she left the house one time, divorce. Uh, you know, these kind of things that the real, real world doesn't work like that. So you have to, you have to have some patience and you have to work with one another and help one another to be better. That is very important. It's very important that there's a type of understanding. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.